Hello, my name is Dr. Sophie Witter. I'm a senior research fellow at the University of Aberdeen and also principal investigator for the FAM Health project. FAM Health stands for Fee Exemption for Maternal Health Care. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the project. So maybe first, a bit of background. What's the problem we're trying to address? Well, in developing countries today, some 300,000 women and around 3 million newborn babies die every year from problems relating to pregnancy and childbirth. These deaths are focused in the poorest countries where women struggle to gain access to skilled care at delivery. This is the time of greatest risk for them and their babies. So what are the factors behind that? We know there are many. One is poorly functioning health systems. Another is that often they struggle to gain access to transport to get into the facilities on time. But a third factor which comes out all the time when you talk to households about why they don't seek skilled care at delivery is cost. The cost of care is simply unaffordable for a lot of families. Now we know from studies done previously, including here at the University of Aberdeen, that for example the cost of a normal delivery in a country like Burkina Faso may be the equivalent of six months of somebody's wages. And then when you have complications it can be even more expensive. So for a caesarean section, for example, it may cost the equivalent of a year and a half of your wages. So no wonder that many women choose to deliver at home. And this is reflected in the statistics. This explains why an incredibly low proportion of women in countries like Burkina Faso receive caesarean sections. Less than 1% overall, compared with what we know should be 5 to 15% globally. And it's not evenly distributed either. Women in the richest 20% um, of the population, say, have a chance that's about three times higher of delivering in a facility with a skilled care attendant compared with women from the poorer groups. And similarly, they also face much lower risks of dying from maternal causes. So what have governments done about this? Well, governments are very concerned about saving the lives of women and children, and they're also aware of the connections with poverty. They're aware that poverty increases exclusion, but also that families paying these often very high costs can be pushed more deeply into poverty. They've also been motivated by the Millennium Development Goals, which commit us all to reducing um, maternal deaths and also increasing women's access to care. These have led to some big changes in how healthcare is funded in uh, developing countries. In the 1980s, thanks to a financial squeeze, most low-income countries had to introduce or increase charges for basic health care. Governments are now trying to roll back those charges, particularly for essential health care services, because we know that they penalise the poor and exclude what is in often the bulk of the population. In the countries we're studying, in Mali and Morocco, in Benin and Burkina Faso, have all, in the last few years, introduced um, big policy changes to make delivery care more affordable. In particular, they have announced it, that caesarean sections will be free. These services were prioritised because they're both expensive for families but can also save lives. Nor are these governments alone. Many governments have recently been changing the way they charge for priority services, particularly focusing on mothers and young children. So what do we know and what do we not know about these policies? There are many outstanding questions. We know they can save lives, but for example, how effectively do they raise utilisation by the target group, particularly the poorest women? And what impact have these policies had on the quality of care that's being provided? These are all questions which FAMHealth is hoping to contribute to studying. We're also interested in the impact on the organisation of healthcare services at the district level. Has it had an impact on other healthcare services? And what about the staff? How motivated are they? And is it enabling them to do their jobs properly? And finally, we want to ask questions about how these policies are transmitted from one country to the other. Have countries learnt from one another in the region in how to implement these policies effectively? These are the kind of questions we'll be studying. So what is FAMHealth? We are a research consortium funded by the European Community. We're led by the University of Aberdeen, but we have partners in six different countries. As well as the UK, we also have partners in Belgium, in Mali, in Morocco, Burkina Faso and Benin. 
because we're doing a multidisciplinary evaluation of these national fee exemption policies, we also have a range of disciplines within our group. Myself, I'm a health economist, but we have midwives, we have demographers, statisticians, epidemiologists, public health people, and also anthropologists in our group. And I think that's one of our strengths. Another strength is the fact that we've worked hard to build links with decision makers in these focal countries and beyond. So what are the impacts Fam Health is hoping to achieve? We're only funded for three years and we have a lot of work to do, but we hope to contribute in three main areas. The first is in terms of building knowledge, building an understanding of how these policies work and in what kinds of contexts, something that decision makers in these countries can learn from, but also in the world beyond. The second area is in the creation of a set of tools, tools which can be used by researchers to evaluate these types of policies. Tools which are practical and not too expensive to use because we work in very resource constrained contexts. Finally, we hope to contribute to developing new mechanisms for research, collaboration, dissemination. Often research findings aren't really absorbed because researchers don't know how to work with decision makers. We've set up something called a community of practice which aims to create a kind of collaborative forum for researchers, decision makers, practitioners and also funders to develop solutions to health system problems. It's relatively new, but we think it's a, a promising new venture. And as well as using it for research development and dissemination, we will also be evaluating it internally. Taken together, we hope that these three um, activities will contribute to better health for the most vulnerable women in the world, but also to stronger health systems for all.